No, I love it. Actually, I'm really happy because I've my I have a long-standing relationship with Gavin for many, many years. I can't remember how many actually. It's been decades, and uh, I've always been a huge fan of headless guitars. And though, like if I play a regular guitar like a Strat, first of all, the thing about Strat that I don't like is this is a full-scale guitar, size guitar. It's 25 and a half inch scale, and the Strat is 25 and a half inch scale. But the fingerboard's so round. And I pull the strings off the edge of the fingerboard all the time. I, I just, it's kind of, I just don't like it. And the other thing is, it's got all this stuff that you don't need. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just like, so when I play a strat, it feels like a rubber band. When I, I play, I can, I, actually, I think, I don't know if I can do this. If anybody's got a Stratocaster and you go like, you pull ahead, it'll go. Doesn't happen. It's the stablest, most, and it balances perfectly. And one of the things that I noticed because I was an SG player for many, many years was I realized that as I played violin for a little bit too, was that I was actually holding the guitar up as part of my playing was actually holding the guitar. So now I can just play it. I don't have to, I don't have to push it down, I don't have to hold it, it just stays wherever I put it. Because it's perfectly balanced. <laughs> I change equipment all the time, you know, and uh, that's, that's the beauty. You're just looking for something better, you know. <laughs> Here we are. The thing about the headless guitar for me is it has nothing to do with how it looks. In fact, that's one of the reasons most people don't like them is because of the way they look. You know, they want to have a big guitar that looks like kind of hairy and everything. And people look at the guitar and they go, oh, it's little, but it's not little at all. Um, there's a lot of advantages ahead with a headless guitar. You don't have to deal with the, uh, I can change a whole set of strings. Not that that's of a major importance, but it's one thing, uh, probably in less time than a guy with a strap can change his high E. And plus, I, I think they sound really great. I think they have a really focused kind of sound. I tried to make the shape kind of not look too crazy so that anybody who'd never really tried a headless guitar before could say, oh, that looks not too weird. Let me try one. And I've kind of been surprised by how many guys who were, maybe wouldn't have been into a headless guitar that try one and then they go, oh yeah, it's pretty good. I think once, once, you, once you get used to playing a headless guitar, it's really hard to go back. <laughs> Well, I like the shape of the original kind of fat boy, so we kept that and then made it smaller, obviously, because it would look stupid like the headless guitar with a giant body, you know, so it was just a kind of scaled down version of that. This guitar is chambered, so it's kind of hollow most all of the way, although this pickup sits in a solid piece of wood, so it's less likely to feed back than one guitar that was hollow like the previous version. Although the first pickup, the front pickup or the neck pickup, however you want to refer to it, is actually sitting in a, in a chambered part, which is great because usually most people use the front pickup more for like chords and, you know, just like playing like cl cleaner lines. And then the, the treble pickup, I guess a lot of guys will use that more for distortion. So it feels like it's a, more dynamic than the original one and they're just snappier or just quicker or something. They just... There's just something about them that 
it was hard for me to get used to going back. I, in fact, I couldn't. In the end, I tried to go back to a guitar with a headstock, but I couldn't make it. And it's beautiful, it's really beautiful. I mean, you can, you know, I have a couple of custom-made guitars and some of them cost thousands and thousands of dollars, just like most other guys. Might have a couple of, you know, more odd exotic guitars or whatever, but I've been playing this guitar since I got the first prototype. I didn't take anything else on the road. I took this one and one other one, they're identical, you know, except for the wood. One of them had a tiger stripe, but the guitar itself is the same. Well, I think with Cabin, they've always, uh, they know they've, uh, especially over the last few years, maybe, they've kind of aligned themselves with some really great players, some really great musicians, you know, like Frank and Steve. And so, I mean, all those guys, they have their own, you know, they, they have their input and they listen, you know, Cabin listen to what they have to, you know, what they're talking about. And I think that's another thing that pushes it along, you know, because sometimes, to try and drive something without a musician or it's like they've got participation with the with the musician which some companies don't have that at all they're just kind of flying in the dark you know but i think cabin has got a lot a, a lot of good people uh, working with them that can sort of say oh well i think this would might be better than that or this might be better than that and, the, and they listen and i think that's why the stuff is so good They've always had like great playability. I even remember when I uh, bought an acoustic guitar for my daughter one year, a, a long time ago. And I just remember she had something else and it was like, <laughs> and it was a famous make, it was a name like, you know. But it was like, I couldn't play it. It was just, it was. And then uh, the Cabin guitar was like, it was beautiful right out of the box. You know, it was just like, uh, it wasn't a very expensive guitar, you know. and. It sounded really good and it played beautifully. It was really, because sometimes I think, especially for young kids when they first start playing the guitar, you don't want to make it any harder for them. It's hard enough. You know, you don't want to give them a guitar where you could stick a phone book between the E string and the first fret, you know. Like, like in the old days, a lot of guitars I played before, it's like, man, the E string's like here somewhere. It's like, oh. So, no, things have, come a long way, you know, and, and I think carving guitars out of the, out of the gate, every one of them, I, I don't think I've played one that wasn't, wasn't, you know, easy to play right out of the box. It works perfectly for me, I love it, it's absolutely great.